Hey family, welcome and welcome and so today's video is going to be about ancestor altar water, okay? So I've been getting a lot of questions and that's like my top view video. I want to do the um, altar series. So on YouTube, I'm going to do doing your personal altar and then on Patreon, I'm going to show you how to set up your altar specifically for your gods, deities, all of that. How to set up um, your, well, I'm going to do your personal altar on here and your ancestor altar. And then on Patreon, I'm going to show you how to work with gods, deities, different ranking of energies. Also how to work with dragons. And another, a couple more uh, altars on the Patreon, but those are going to be the first two. The dragon altar and the gods and deities also, which I recommend that you have both, okay? I highly recommend that you have all four of these, honestly. Um, but I feel like the most required and the most necessary um, is your own, yourself, also, right? And then also, too, a lot of people don't realize this, but you should be, yes, we should honor our ancestors. Yes, we need to honor our ancestors. But also, too, the gods and the goddesses and Orishas, those could be some of your ancestors in your DNA, your your soul lineage, and you're you're too busy honest, honoring your actual family, the um your family ancestors, right? So I recommend yourself, the gods and goddesses and deities, and then what I like to do for my ancestors, if I'm not at that moment having a present altar for them, because I do a lot of moving altars, because I move around a lot, but I will pick two days out of the month, or um if once a week is too much, pick two days out of the month where you go ahead and you honor your ancestors that day, but you make it a big thing, right? Um, now, the dragon altars, dragon altars are really, like, especially if you practice in magic, if you are, if you feel like you're having protection issues, if you feel like, you know what I'm saying, dragons, baby, okay, they serious, okay? And that's why that is the more, um, it's more of somebody that I would, I would recommend for somebody who practices, somebody who's, like, maybe a practitioner, or if you just really are out here doing spiritual work and you have, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of different reasons why. I'm going to go in deep about that on my Patreon, okay? But let's just talk about the water right now, today, okay? This video is going to be about water. Now, I have somebody ask me on Instagram, um, what does it mean when they have another water bottle around the house that has the spirit bubbles in it, okay? So if you didn't watch my first video about ancestor also water go ahead and check that one out okay but in this video we're going to be talking about what that means and i'm going to be giving you some giving you guys some more info that i didn't give you the first time about um ancestor also i don't believe i did i just rewatched it so i know i i don't believe i did but sometimes i can make a mistake or miss here so you know i'm human but let's get into it so uh when it comes to your ancestor also water water is what it is fluid right um, a conduit. Water is flowing. Something that you always want to have on your altar is water. Something that you always want to drink every day is water, right? Water is a necessity, okay? Just like, just because everybody ain't drinking water like they should, don't stop it from being a necessity, right? Okay, so water is vital. I tell people, if you don't have anything, you have water. If you don't have anything, you don't even need a damn water bottle. If you don't have anything, go to that faucet and pray over that water. Now let's talk about that. Let's talk about the types of water that we want to put out. So the types of water that you want to get. Now my ancestors, this is the download that came in my spirit last year around um, like the, the summertime. My ancestors was telling me that they more so resonated with tap water because it's more from the earth or for me to go to the waterfall and get them water and give that to them okay this is what my ancestors told me that may work for you if you are struggling to see bubbles in your water i recommend that you get some tap water or you go to a waterfall or something like that like right now i sometimes i use water bottles for them but i um because it's spring water but i more so get tap water i refill after i use the water bottle i pour it out i refill it 444 and the sunshine and period they, they in agreement you seen you seen it get brighter in here <laughs> Period. <laughs> Thank y'all. But yeah, so 
they more so resonate with tap water. In my experience, and I have a lot of experience, okay, working with spirits, spirit guides, ancestors. When it comes to the ancestors, I find, even especially on my personal altar, you know what I'm saying? I really find that giving tap water is something that they more so resonate with. Why is it that? I feel as though, number one, you don't have to spend any money. People really get confused about this practice. It's not about spending money. It's about the dedication. It's about the, um, what is it, the, the sacrifice, um, the remembrance, the thought. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be where you're stressing, where it's like, oh, I got to go get this water. I got to go buy them a water for us. I don't got no water about. It's not about that. It's about pray over that water. Get some tap water. Pray over it. Put it on your altar. I promise you, you're going to start seeing results way more than what you see when it comes to water bottles. This is just in my experience, okay? Now, when it comes to the water bottles, there's nothing wrong with water bottles. I still use water bottles, but I do use tap water more often, okay? So what kind of water do you use? We cover that. Now, once we put our water on the altar... What if I'm not getting any bubbles? Why am I not receiving bubbles in my altar water? Do you sit and commune at your altar? I recommend, like I told you, that hour of solitude that you should spend in the day. You should at least spend 30 minutes to an hour at your altar. I recommend doing it separately, but everybody don't have two hours to do that, right? So if you don't have two hours to do it separately, sit with your ancestors as well. I like to sit with myself, even though my ancestors are always with me. I sit with myself, watch the sunrise, however. Then I also go to my altar. I talk to my ancestors. I spend time with them. I play some of their music. Now, um, depending on, too, if you don't really resonate with any family ancestors, but you resonate with, like, Orishas and you're African. I don't like using African-American. but Or you resonate with, um, like, Indians and things like that. Put those deities that you really resonate with on your ancestor altar because those could be your ancestors, right? Those could be your ancestors. We're going to talk about the God, God, deity, all that altar. We're going to talk about that separate altar in a minute. But if you resonate very heavily with certain gods and deities and you feel like, and this is, you, this is required for you to use your intuition, your discernment on what you feel you resonate with. Like, oh, Chelsea, he is somebody that really resonates with my spirit. That's my family. You feel me? Okay, so even just the origins as a whole, they, I resonate with them. That is a family spirit to me. I know that that is divine. Those are my ancestors, okay? Everybody don't resonate with that. But, er, but sometimes you may want to work with that God or deity. That's okay. Save that for the God and deity altar. We're talking about the ancestor altar, okay? So we got water. We got spending time there. We want to spend time in commune. Talk with them. Build a relationship. They will answer. I recommend getting a pendulum. If you don't get a pendulum, let me show y'all something that y'all could do. Okay? Let me show y'all something. Well, let me. I don't want to take too long to do all that. But I'll show y'all that in another video on how to create your own pendulum. But you can literally get a string. Get any type of thing. Like I've even used a little plastic string from the clothes. Suck a little bead on there, and I promise you, just because it's a pendulum doesn't, just because it's not the pendulum that you bought, again, get your head out of spending money and all that. Like, think about just logical thinking of what you need and get it done. Even if you have some type of, like, something with something heavier on the bottom, you can use that as a pendulum. I don't care what it is. I use a lot of different things because if I need an answer and I can't find my pendulum or I can't find this or I can't find that, I'm going to get my answer, right? Okay? So, we got the water on there. What kind of water? We got sitting there communing, spending time, dating, courting with your spirits. You want them to be there for you, you need to be there for them. That's another thing, too, that um, with this divine feminine, divine masculine era, like, people need to look within themselves. You know, a lot of us expect from others, but do we give out that energy that we're expecting? So what I'm telling you is give 
them the energy that you expect them to show up in your life, right? And don't expect nothing. This is just you just spending time. You're not asking for nothing in this time. You ain't asking for shit. You sitting here spending time with them, talking with them. How would you feel if somebody comes to you and every time this girl come around, this boy come around, he asking for something or she asking for something? Don't nobody want to be around that shit, do you? So, but what about this? Somebody come around, they always playing your music, y'all having a good time, y'all laughing, y'all giggling. I even sit and I will paint my reaches, I will draw them, I will paint my ancestors, I will paint. Spend time. Commune. Court them. Bring them gifts. I go to the store, I get myself something, I get them some. I go to the store, I do this, I get something for me, I get something for them. I go upstairs, I come downstairs, I may bring them an orange back up. You know what I'm saying? I may make them some coffee. Do what you would want done for you, okay? So we got what kind of water, spending time. Now, if you are struggling to see bubbles in your water now, but when you get to your altar, let me tell you this. Because I had the girl, she asked me, okay, what about the bubbles in the water that's not on the altar, right? Okay, so this is when I require where I, um, I don't think I spoke about this in the other video either, about prayer, okay? When you go to your ancestor altar and you put that water there, you want to affirm, okay? We're going to affirm. This water is for my ancestors. Name them. You don't have names, how do you address them? If you don't have a way to address them, then you need to you need to get clear on that. That's something that you need to get clear on. You can say, um, to all my unknown and known ancestors, um, to all the gods and deities that are my ancestors, unknown and known. No other spirits. This is for them. They didn't want y'all to hear that. Let's mess with my throat chakra. Hold on, let me give me some water. Hold on. And I got some bubbles in this water. Also, something else that I do, key tip, pro tip, whatever on the side tip, any water that before I drink any water I have, I open it, I let it sit, and I allow the ancestors and let them know, my ancestors, I, I pray throughout my day, all day. Whether you hear me or not, I'm saying it in my head. You understand what I'm saying? But it's power in saying things out loud, but I'm going to also tell you about that because everything don't need to be said out loud. Do you understand me? Okay. Now, I allow them to partake with me. I welcome them. So I do have water. I do have bubbles in my water. Now, let's talk about this because I've lived in places and I've been places where it's been a lot of spiritual presence. Just because it's spiritual presence, that doesn't mean it's a good spiritual presence, right? Just because it's a spiritual presence, that don't mean it's a necessarily positive, right? So this is why we're going to say that prayer. Because we need our spirits to know that this one is for them. And any, any other spirits that don't align, that is not, this is not for you. This is not for you. I said who this is for. So you're not allowed to have any of this water. Do you understand me? Power and words, we spell when we speak. Okay, this is a lot. Okay, I hope this is not going over nobody's head. Rewind it if you need to. So, when it comes to, you put your water out there, you pray over it, you bless it, and then you pray and, let, and, and you take charge of who you know it's for. You tell, who is it for? You're telling that, right? Now, after you tell that, you say, commune with them. This is also helps to where you're not communing with spirits that you don't want to commune with. You're not communing with spirits that don't have no good for you for real, but you're feeding them and you didn't even know it. You're not communing with spirits that really want your detriment or that's monitoring spirits. You're not communing with them spirits because they're not welcome. So also, too, before you get started with giving your water, you could do a little cleanse. Okay? Hit your dragon's blood. Cleanse your altar because we should be cleansing our altar what? Daily. 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 How do you do that? You put an incense on your altar. Cleanse. Wipe it down at least once a week. At least. Depending on how much work you're doing. Now. Bubbles in the water around the house. Your house. You should be. If you're praying over your altar. You should be praying over your house. 
But I want people to understand this too. Like people, somebody asked me on Instagram, what does that mean when there's bubbles around the water that's not on the altar? Those are spirits. We know that we know that the bubbles are spirits. So what you want to make sure is that you are praying and you are um, affirming out your mouth who is allowed in your house and who's allowed to drink and who's allowed to eat with you and off you and who's not, okay? Because a lot of times some people will think that, oh, this is all my spirit team, when some of them spirits might not get the best interest for you and they're sucking up the life out of you. If you're feeding your altar and you're drained, that's not right. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be super drained. Now, say if you did a super big work in, okay, I understand that. It took a lot of energy out of you. Not, y'all know I talk about that in the past. But if you're just putting water on your altar and you're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, your finance is not doing good, you, you're not, and then necessarily not your finance, but if you're not taken care of, you understand what I'm saying? If you still very needy, you you missing a lot of you missing a lot of regular necessities. That's a problem. If you are having a problem with a peace of mind and things like that, or you feeling unsettled, that's a problem. It's probably some spirits drinking off your water that that's not welcome. Use your mouth and you speak out loud. Now, when it comes to the pendulum, remember when I said that about that? If you go to your altar and you want to ask questions, everything don't need to be said out loud. Because yes, we cleanse. Yes, we do all that. But sometimes, you never know. Okay? And when I ask my pendulum questions, some questions I will ask you out loud and some I will ask in my head. And when you ask some questions in your head, you for sure that know that. For sure that know that. For sure. Only your answers and spirit guides can hear your thoughts. If anything else, you feel like anything else is hearing your thoughts, go check out that hex and curse and removal and all that that I got up on the Patreon. Go check that out, how to, how to do all that. After you've done all that, it should be no interferences. It should be none. And if it is, that means that you didn't do, you didn't go over there and get them recipes. Because those recipes is fail proof. The, the smoke cleanses I gave, the baths I gave, the, all that, all that over there, them rituals, you ain't going to have nothing lingering after that shit. I promise you. Okay? So this video is already getting super long. But yeah, I just want y'all to understand that. When you're putting your water, water out, use tap water. Why not? See how your spirits like it. I promise you. This is what they told me. This is the download they gave me to give, y'all. And I um I had took a lot of notes on the answers to also around that time, but it wasn't time for me to deliver it. Spirit was like, uh-uh, not yet. I was getting a lot of downloads last year, and now I'm just now putting them into fruition of delivering the messages to the people because this is when they wanted me to give it. Even when I took a break from the tarot readings, they telling me that that wasn't my time. I was supposed to take a break. I was obedient. I thought I was supposed to stop. I didn't know what they wanted me to do. I just was obedient. Be obedient, okay, and realize too that when you're sitting there praying to also you may get downloads. If it doesn't seem like it, or it seems foreign or something to you, that is your spirit guide. Write it down. I will get visualizations. I will see birds. I will see images. I will see people. I will see. I will hear names. I write it down. I piece it together later. Okay. Um. So yeah, another thing I do with my water. I started to like add lines to my water, um, and this is every now and then. Okay, I still keep regular water as well, but I add limes, oranges, like I just kind of, the fruit thing I will do for them uh, every now and then, every couple days, and they like that, they fuck with that, you know, see what your spirit's like, if they like it or not, but um, yeah, so this is going to be part one of the altar series, and I will be doing the gods and deities and all that and the dragon altars on the patreon um if you the dragon altar i can't really stress that enough to y'all but i'm telling y'all when i start working with dragons <sighs> baby i'm telling you okay i'm telling you like hey it, 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 it has been very next level, okay? And I can't wait for these manifestations to come through. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. 
Um, but I will be telling y'all how to set up y'all Dragon Altar over there on the Patreon. And um, I recorded some content. And I will be uh, putting that content in there, how I set mine up and how I utilize it and the different amazing things that it's done for me and how, you know, like, just speaking on the protection aspect, and that's not even the half of it, but just the protection that comes from dragons, bro. 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 Okay. <laughs> But if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Like this video, thumbs up this video, and hit the alarm so you can see what I'm posting. As well, if you're interested in more in-depth content, I just dropped like a lot of videos on the Patreon about. So if you want to start your own botanica where you can get herbs at, and then two more so of instead of going to the botanicas, I'm showing you markets that you can go to to get super affordable herbs. I spent like $7.00 in the uh, market the other day and I was just showing y'all where to go, what's the translations of certain things, like, cause some herbs will only be written in Spanish and you won't know what it is, so, yeah, I did that for y'all on the Patreon and really just showing y'all how to do a lot of affordable things where you don't have to go, I don't spend super big money on offerings, you know what I'm saying, like, I don't need to. Now, it comes to a point where, yes, certain things, I will go out there and splurge and do that, but like, your ancestors and your spirit guides, guides, deities, they're not, they don't want you to, they don't want you to go broke trying to do shit, you know what I'm saying, like, you're not trying to, it's not the purpose of this, you're not going broke trying to do this, this is something that's supposed to be sustainable, if it's not sustainable, you shouldn't be doing it, if you wonder if you're going to spend your last hundred dollars or the last, whatever, don't do that, go get that tap water, go get some fruit, make it basic, okay, um, and, if you go worry about how to spend that last hundred dollars, go spend it on the Patreon. Because that's when you're gonna get the info of literally you can go I even my video I put on YouTube, you can go outside and get offerings. Also I teach about that on there. You don't even need to spend money. It is about the especially when it comes to going outside, that's when you're really starting to do research. That's when you're really starting to what happens when they shut all these stores down? You feel me? Or whatever the case may be. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's real sensitive about that right now. But hey, I'm ready for whatever, okay? I love you. Love yourself.